Affinity Photo 2 has got a load more masking features. You can create compound masks. Now this is gonna be a very basic one, not gonna be a complicated grunged or textured image, but you could do that. So I've got this gradient, could be an image, it could be anything. Go over here and select the rectangle tool. Create a rectangle and it's in white. You see white there and you can go to layer and you can go down to rasterize to mask. You can turn anything into a mask via rasterize to mask. Well, there may be things you can't, but this you can. So rasterize to mask and you can see now you've got a mask of that pixel layer and you can select it go to the move tool and you can move it around. You can see the gradient there, go to that side, you can see the gradient and so on. What you can also do is deselect everything, make sure nothing selected and you can go to layer and you can go down to new compound mask layer and that will add a compound mask layer. Best not to select something at this point. You can also go over here and click here and do the same, just in the layers panel, compound mask. Again, make certain nothing is selected. So I'm gonna go here, compound mask, and it's just applied above. Because what I wanna do, select this mask, and I wanna drag this in to this. So just drag that into that, and you can see now it's become part of that, a child of this compound mask. With that selected, what I can do, I can still just move it around as before, nothing's changed, resize, etc. Also, I can right click, and I can duplicate and you can see now I've got two and I can move that to this position. You can see the gradient still, see the gradient up there. And of course you don't have to do this. You could of course create some additional masks as well, but I'm just sticking with a rectangle. You can also notice you've got this, you've got this feature here. Just click and hold. Click and hold and you will see this pop up. Add, which is of course the default. You can also subtract and you can see what happens. Subtract just removes it. So that mask now it's still live. You can come back to it anytime. You intersect, so that's the intersection between the two mask layers. Select that, you can see it's intersect and just click there. Now the bottom one doesn't have that feature. It's only the one that's on top. So intersect or XOR, so you can see that gap where it's, and you got that. So you can run through them. You can say subtract again, so you can see it just subtracted. So it's live and you can go back to add. And of course you can add more than that. You can always go right click and duplicate. So you can create a third one. And you can see now I've got the gradient still all the way over there. And I can resize this. So let's just resize it. Exactly the same as the this one, you've got this. So again, click there and add, that's the default, subtract, so subtract, and you can still move it around. So you can see as you do that, it will subtract from the overall mask. So you can reposition it, you can of course rotate it, and you can click there again, and intersect, and it will intersect. That's the final result, the intersection, or XOR. And again, you can move it around, you can see what happens. You can create all kinds of combinations using this compound mask. And of course you can add another one, right click and duplicate again. And you can see you've got that same thing and it, again you can just keep continuing on. Creating all kinds of complex designs with this mask. And it doesn't have to be just obviously a rectangle, it could be any shape, any image, but a rectangle's a great example. And of course you can always just go over here and toggle the visibility. So you don't need to show it at all. So just get rid of it. But if you've got it, you've got these settings here, and of course you can expand that out. The bottom one, again, doesn't have that feature at all. It's only the ones that are above, and you can build up all kinds of complex designs. So that's compound masks. And of course, at any point, you can always just delete it or select one and delete it if you don't want the mask at all. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please put in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. If you've got any questions about the mask, this compound feature, as well as any other masking features, please let me know. Do you find it of interest? Is it a great feature? Do you think you'll be using this a lot? I think it's nice to be able to combine them and generate all kinds, of, especially if you're using, say, like a textured design around the edge. It's a great feature, but also just for text 
all kinds of things can be used as masks and you can build up some very complex designs using it as well as combining with filters as well. I'll be doing videos on those. Thank you much.